47. We're singing the Israeli song by Naomi Shemel. With these words, we are more connected to our homeland in Israel. And we sing this kind of contemporary prayer about maintaining and keeping all that is good in our lives and continuing to pray that it will be so, that we will come back to the good land, to our people Israel together. We say, Hashiveni ve'ashuva el ha'aretz ha'tova. We begin with the chorus. Al kol al kol Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Welcome to Temple B'nai Or, to everybody here, to all our guests, to everyone online. Let's take a moment, turn to the people around you, especially if there's someone around you you don't know. Introduce yourselves and say Shabbat shalom. <laughs> Shabbat, let us bring in Shabbat with light. We call, we call on tomorrow's bat mitzvah, Maya Cohen, with her family. We're on page two with the Shabbat candles. We call on tomorrow's bat mitzvah, Maya Cohen. Family, please come out of the tech room. <laughs> Maya's family. Ani lo matchila biladaich boy kvar. Ani po ima ima ima. Wow, funny guy. Oh, here we sing to you. Be good. See the way to you and 
Shabbat Breshit, the Shabbat of the beginning of the Torah. We had our month of our holy half a month, three weeks of a month of Tishrei, and here we are for the first regular Shabbat of the year. It's not regular. <laughs> we turn to page 20, L'Chadodi. Chatzik is on page 26. Yitkada, v'yitkada, shemei rabba. Amen. 
Pray together at the top of page 31. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. Your wisdom sets the way on which time and season glide. Your breath guides the sail of the stars. Creator of the tide of time and light, you guide the current of day into night. As heaven spans to infinity, you set its course for eternity. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. Amen.
Let's pray on page 39. Standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught before ever we stood at Sinai's foot, that wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt, that there is a better place, a promised land, that the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness, that there is no way to get from here to there except by joining hands, marching together. Page 40. Jacob, 
Page 46, we rise in all ways possible. We'll begin the Amidah together. We'll continue privately with our prayers, the prayers of our ancestors on the even number pages, or perhaps the contemporary prayers, of course, the prayers of your hearts. The Amidah concludes on page 62, and you may be seated when you're finished. So let us take a big breath and welcome this Shabbat let go of the week and all the stress that we had this week, especially some people had a lot of stress this week. We're going to like exhale it out and welcome Shabbat and calm and shalom and peace. And as we, uh, as is our custom at Temple B'nai Or, when we sing Adonai Sfatai, we open with another part of the psalm that talks about how pure our heart is. So we ask to pray with the purest of our hearts and the purest of prayers that God has created on our behalf. 
pray now for Rufua Shlema, Rufua Tanefesh, Rufua Tagufa, healing of body, a healing of spirit. This Shabbat, we are praying for those in our community, in our, in our families. Uri ben Ahva, Esther ben Ari Altman, Michal Altman, Stacy Barat, Judy Benjamin, Richard Benjamin, Larry Benson, Elena Buckbaum, Ken Christ, Eleanor Dankner, Alan Goldstein, Harriet Goldstein, Harriet Hochberg, Paige Holt, Oliver Horn, Andy Jewell, Lawrence Keefe, Larry Kessler, Reese Osmond, Donna Paris, Eileen Reinfleisch, Carol Rosenblatt, Scott Sains, Dini Schlosser, Anjali Shalit, Carol Sheridan, Gunnar Shields, Anita Swatunsky, Marjorie Van Dow, Lisa Wolper, and Izzy Yagoda. If you're online and you're praying for someone, you can put their name in the chat. And if you're thinking of someone and like to say their name, please do so. Also, at this time, think of the soldiers that are fighting in the IDF that are a part of our personal family. The names in our community that we send our prayers to are Itai Lubaton, Shira Feinberg, Metal Feinberg, Mira Nolik, Aminadav Bloom, Eviatar Bloom, Yariv Sa'ar, Sharon, Sharon Sa'ar, Ruben Korten, Etach Korten, Benjamin Carlton, Halil Tenenbaum, Jeremy Tillinger, Rav Nimrod Peretz, Sol Ben Ziva. Turn our prayers to the hostages. This Shabbat, I'd like to speak of Rome Brozlowski, who was 19 at the time he was taken captive, now 20. He was working as a security guard at the Supernova Festival. He was on a weekend break from the army, and he would often work as a security guard when he had free time. The Jerusalem resident got two young women to safety that morning and was wounded in both hands, according to other survivors who saw him. We, we pray that Rome and all of the hostages will be home soon. Oh, my God. 
since there are a lot of guests here tonight, I'm going to ask. I'm going to start the sermon with a New Jersey question. What's the best Bruce Springsteen song? <laughs> best Bruce Springsteen song. Born to Run. Okay, Born to Run. That's great. Very good. Anybody? I'm on fire. Okay, so we got one from the '70s, one from the '80s. Well, Glory Days also from the '80s. Not, none of the '90s stuff. Ghost of John, Ghost of Tom Joe. That's pretty good too. Okay, but how about this? Is, this is a good one from the late '70s album. I think 1978, "Darkness on the Edge of Town." Adam raised a cane. Go, go look it up after Shabbat. Put it into Spotify or Apple Music or whatever you listen to. Adam raised a cane. It's a good one. It's a great midrash, a great commentary on part of this week's Torah portion. Adam, right? Humanity is what Adam means in Hebrew. Raised a cane. We all, not speaking about anybody's kids here, but we all have, we all had the potential to raise a cane. But we all have the potential to be a cane. And who is Cain, or in Hebrew, Cain, and his brother Hevel, we anglicize it as Abel. Who were these two brothers, the first kids born in the Torah? Well, let's talk about their names. It, you know, often when we, have a to when we have people in the Torah, their name means something. Cain, it could mean acquire, but it could also mean, kind of, it has to do with creation. God is called Kone Shamayim Ba'aretz, the one who creates heaven and earth. And then Hevel, those of you who studied uh, Sefer Kohelet with me know what Hevel means, if you remember. What does Hevel mean? Mist. Something that's ephemeral, right? Okay. Cain, Cain was the older brother. Hevel was the younger brother. Now, I'm the oldest in my family, uh, but... What do older brothers, older siblings sometimes think of the younger ones? They're not as wise as the older They're not as what? Wise. Not as wise. Or maybe the little kids have all the fun, right? They get away with everything, don't they? But really, every kid is different and every kid is the same in some way, too. Cain was went into his father's business he was a farmer which is hard to do a uh, very hard in the ancient world to be a farmer the little brother hevel what did he do was a shepherd what do shepherds do they just wander around sit in the sun watch the watch the uh, the sheep every once in a while they have to chase away a lion but Easy-going, hippy-dippy life, right? Those young kids, they get away with everything. In fact, our, our tradition says, Cain, Cain uh, farmed flax. What do you make out of flax, you know, besides flaxseed oil? What else do you make out of flax? Linen. Who said, yeah, linen. And Abel herded sheep. What was the main product from sheep? Wool. What does the Torah say about linen and wool? You can't mix them together. It's called shatnez. You can't wear clothes mixed with linen and wool, giving us a hint that Cain and Hevel don't really mix. Okay. That's some background. Here's a story. It's very short from Sefer Bereshit, our first Torah portion. Usually gets lost, the story, because we, get, we concentrate on the creation myths, the two creation myths at the beginning. So here's the Cain and the Hevel. <clears throat> In the course of time, Cain brought, brought an offering to God from the fruit of the soil. Cain, he invented sacrifice. He was bringing something that he worked hard and was going to give it to God. He worked hard for it, was giving it to God. The Hevel, he be gamhu. And Hevel also brought, and he brought, though, the choicest of the firstlings of his flock. Not only he brought the choicest, the best, the best sheep, but the firstborn too. Who was the firstborn? Cain. I'm sure Freud would have a field day with that line, right? 
killing the firstborn, but okay. He brought the choicest, and God paid heed to Abel and his offering. This little young upstart here getting accepted by God. But God paid no heed to Cain in his offering. Cain was much distressed, and his face fell. Vayomer Adonai el Cain, and the Eternal One said to Cain, Why are you distressed? Why is your face fallen? Surely, if you do right, there is uplift. But if you do not do right, sin crouches at the door. Its urge is towards you. Yet you can be its master. We're able to control anger. It's okay to feel anger, maybe God's saying, but what do we do with it? And once we do something with it, it leads to more and more and more. Okay? So then, Vayomer Kain el Hevel Achiv. And Cain said to his brother Abel, dot, dot, dot. We don't know what Cain said. And when they were in the field, Cain set upon his brother Abel and killed him. God said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? And he said, I don't know. Lo yadati. Hashomer achi anochi. Am I my brother's keeper? What have you done? God says, hark, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Therefore, you shall be more cursed than the ground, which opens its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. If you till the soil, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. You shall become a ceaseless wanderer on earth. Maybe Cain hated that his brother just kind of wandered around with the sheep. But now that's Cain's punishment. Okay, there's the story. So let's go back to Cain talking to his brother Abel. The Torah doesn't tell us what he says. Our ancient rabbis, there's a famous midrash that I just want to mention. What were an ancient rabbinic telling says, what were they fighting about? They said, let's divide up the world. One took the earth and the other took the movable, movable objects. One said, that land that you're standing on is mine. And the other said, what you are wearing is mine. One said, take it off. And the other said, fly. And because of this, Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. So what were they fighting over? Stuff. Possessions. Real estate and, you know, material things. Okay? Another rabbi said, <clears throat> what were they fighting about? One said, the temple will be built in my territory. Knowing the future, they knew that there would be some temple in Jerusalem, and one said, it'll be in my territory, and the other said, in my territory. So they were fighting about what? Religion. A third option. I'll summarize it. There, there's some kids here. One said, who was the only woman that was around? Eve. So one said, I want her, and the other said, I want her. So what were they fighting about? Sex. Right? So what, or Freud would have a lot to say about it too, but what, what are the things that cause conflict? Stuff. Religion. Religion. Right. <laughs> and, and, Desire, desire, lust, right? Lust, okay. But, but, let's go back to that ellipses where Cain spoke to his brother Abel and we don't know what he said. I think maybe, and I'm, I'm learning this from a teaching. I listened to a podcast just yesterday from a, a teacher in Jerusalem, Judy Klitzner, Maybe it was Cain was just speaking at his brother, not speaking with his brother. She writes, of special note and of enduring re relevance in the Bible's depiction of the first interpersonal conflict is the absence of dialogue between the principal actors. In a subtle yet compelling manner, this detail highlights one of the gravest dangers that ho hovers above the sibling relationship. 
when siblings, whether literal or figurative, choose to talk at instead of to one another, a descent into violence all too frequently ensured, ensues. Sorry. A descent into violence ensues. I heard this teaching from her, and I think she was hinting at, and now I'm going to explicitly say, in 11 days, there is an election in America. You might have heard. There is a lot of speaking at and not speaking to. And even though you disagree with your neighbors or with those people in those states, right, I come from one of those states, right? Our esteemed rabbi here now lives in one of those states, yes. They're not so different from us. In fact, Hashomer Achi Anochi. Am I my brother's keeper? And what is the answer? Yes. Now we could say, oh, that side's worse than this side, and both sides are saying that. But it doesn't matter. As we saw four years ago, speaking at someone leads to violence. And how in America do we solve political violence? How we solve it is speaking with each other. I heard an interview the other day with someone who wrote the, uh, the first biography just came out of John Lewis, the civil rights leader who became a politician, right? Who had ideas that could have been seen as radical at the time, but he knew the only way to get there, his desired outcome, his dream of a better America, was to speak with not to speak at, right? I want to end a prayer for the election written four years ago by the teacher Erica Brown. Today is a time for hope and prayer. I pray for the equanimity to accept whatever the election result is. I pray that there will be no violence as a result of this election. I pray that relationships fractured by politics will be reconciled. I pray for the patience to wait out what could be a long and drown out election. I pray for an end to gratuitous, gratuitously mean arguments among strangers and friends on social media. I pray for the curiosity to learn more about the governance of this country. I pray in Thanksgiving to retrieve the time I spent sending out political memes. I pray for the kindness to reach out to neighbors who did not vote like me. I pray that millions of lawn signs will find themselves in recycling bins by the end of the week. In fact, I know there's Canadians here, and that's the law in Canada, that they, the, the candidates actually come and pick them up for you. I pray that I can put, can put the distraction of this election behind me and return with full energy to my work and my family. I pray for a peaceful succession of power. I pray that whatever party wins will reach across the aisle. I pray that no matter the outcome, we will take racial injustice seriously. I pray that no matter the outcome, anti-Semitism will be on the decline. I pray that we can still internalize the Talmud's me message of robust and respectful debates. I pray that I am fair enough to acknowledge the contributions of the party I did not vote for. I pray for the wisdom to believe in our unity even when we don't act uniformly. Bruce Spring taught us, Bruce Springsteen taught us, you know, 40 something years ago, Adam raised a cane. It's all our jobs to speak with each other. Shabbat Shalom. So let us, through our prayers, envision that day when all is one, when God's name is one. Elena is on page 282 at the bottom of the page. Please rise.
עלינו לשבח לאדון הכל, לתת גדולה ליותר בראשית, שלא עשנו כגויי הארצות, ולא שמנו כמשפחות האדמה, שלא שם חלקנו כהם, וגור עלינו ככל המונם, ואנחנו קוראים ומשתחווים ומודים לפני מלך מלכי המלכים, הקדוש ברוך הוא. ונאמר והיה אדוני למלך על כל הארץ ביום ההוא, ביום ההוא יהיה אדוני אחד ושמו, ושמו, ושמו אחד. We think of our loved ones whom death has recently taken from us, those who died at the season in years past, those whom we have drawn into our hearts with our own. If you are here to say Kaddish for a loved one, if you are able, if you're comfortable, please rise so that we can support you, so that we can give honor to their name. We are in the period of Shloshim, the first month of mourning for Leonard Sickle, Rita Louise Fox, Glenn Burnfield, Camille Sainz, and Wendy Sansevieri. This week marks the yard site, the anniversary of the death of Mayor Baker, Louis Bauer, Nina Bain, Leonard J. Bockstrom, Mitchell Cobert, David Ehrlich, Earl Goodman, Virginia Kaplan, Sidney Kyle, Harry Levy, Louis Lewis, Morris Libman, Ann Lieber, Henry Litwin, Leo Lowenstein, Bridget Newberg, Victor Pelson, Rose Rassus, Morris Rubel, Leonard Sainz, Abe Saperstein, Hannah Schliger, Sidney Schlosser, Jerry Stein, Gwen Vogel. We also remember Minerva Cohen, Louis Cohen, Hazel Del Villano, John Del Villano, Kamisa Dadun, Tamames Dadun, Simi Azua, Az, Az, Azawi. Azawi, sorry, Israel Azawi, Eli Dadun, Rochelle Cumberbeek, and Renee Signet. If you're praying for someone, if you're remembering someone and like to say their name as I, as, uh, please say it as I go around. If you're online, you can add names in the chat. Yuchanam libracha, may their memories be for blessing. The mourners, Kaddish is on page 294. Please rise. Yit gadal, yit kadash, shemei rabba, v'yamma divrach hirutei, v'yamlich malchutei, v'cha yochon uv'yomechon, uv'chaye d'cho beit Yisrael, Bagala Uvizman Kari Vimru Amen. Yehe Shme Rabba Mevarach Leolam O Ame Amaya. Yit Barach Yish Tabach Yit Par Yit Romam Vit Nase Vit Hadar Vit Ale Vit Halal Shme de Kudusha Rihu. The Ela Minko Berhata Vishirata Tush Berhata Venechemata Da Amiran Vi Alma Vimru Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shamaya, Bachayim Alenu, Vialko Yisrael, Vimru Amen. O se Shalom Bim Romav, Hu Yase Shalom Alenu, Vialko Yisrael, Vimru Amen. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us, to all Israel, to which we say, Amen. Is he seated?
Tonight we're going to conclude with another prayer from Israel to bring us closer. Kiddush is on page five, and after uh, Maya leads us in Kiddush, please join us in the Orestes Social Hall. Yeah. So Maya is going to chant the paragraph that precedes. Uh, because it's in her Torah portion, and she's going to also chant it tomorrow morning, but she's going to do it now, too. Uh, no, no, Mikol melacho asher asa Vayivarech Elohim Et yom ha-shvi'i Vayikadesh oto Ki vo shavat Mikol melacho Asher bara Elohim la'asot Baruch Adonai Elohinu melech ha'olam
Come on up. All come the on. kids. Isabel, come. Come on. Lincoln, Lincoln come on. Isabel. Come on. Annie, come on. You're not really a kid, but that's fine. Go. Come. Come on. Come on. Come on. Noah, just be a friend. <laughs> be a buddy. Caleb. So what? She's 14, too. All right. Shabbat shalom, Shabbat shalom. <laughs> 